Hi and welcome back to another one of Al's Geek Labs. On today's Geek Lab, I'm going to ask myself a question. Why in the hell do I have not one, not two, but three laptops hanging around the house which I've got absolutely no use for? Well, I say I've got no use for them but maybe I could reappropriate them somehow. There's a thing called FreeDOS, and I've always wanted to play with it. Today on the Geek Lab, I'm going to show you how to download, install, and then start using FreeDOS in anger. Let's get started. Now, you may be wondering, why in the hell would I use FreeDOS? It's different. Why is it different? Because it's got lots of software in it that's free, of course, but the software is really quite useful. It has a package manager so you can install software as you choose. Software included is things like Arachne, which is a fully fledged web browser for DOS. There's also games like ZDoom and so forth. There's also um, an EMS memory manager built in the open source one, the CD-ROM drivers and all the rest, the sort of things that are a little bit finicky when you have a MS-DOS machine to set up. They're already there and ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll explore some of those tools on today's video as well as just showing you how to install it. Now there are a few ways that you can install FreeDOS on your machine. If you've got a fairly old machine but not too old, you can probably install from USB. So I'll show you that preferred method of doing it. However, there is a boot floppy option, so if you just have floppy disks, you can do that. Or there's also a CD version. I'll show you all of it. The version I'm going to do today is on the USB stick. So the first thing you want to do is go over to the FreeDOS website. And that's at www.freedos.org. And when you're there, click on this button, Download FreeDOS 1.2. You'll see all the different versions that are available for you. There's the standard CD-ROM, the legacy CD-ROM for older PCs. And then if you need a boot floppy, you can uh, download a boot floppy image and the CD-ROM. And um, then there's the USB options, which is a full USB and a light USB. Now in this case, I'm going to download the full USB because it's got all the files we want on there. So I've just downloaded the image into my downloads folder and whilst I'm waiting for that to download, I thought I'd head over to the wiki site for FreeDOS just to give you an idea of what FreeDOS can actually do. First off, it shows you that it is really free and then uh, it gives you a few use cases why most people use it. Play classic DOS games, run old software, legacy software and develop embedded systems. Now, what I find great about, obviously, well, DOS is that it runs on a standard PC and FreeDOS is no exception. You, it says you can run it here with a 386 processor or better, but in reality, you can even run it on an 8088 or 8086 machine. And now this is the important part, what makes FreeDOS better? So with any luck, around about now, hopefully your download of FreeDOS will have completed. Now I'm gonna go over to a website Belena.io, which has the utility called Belena Etcher, which is a free download. Belena Etcher makes it very easy for you to put your ISO or disk image onto the USB stick. And that's exactly what we'll be using it for here. Now you can see me here downloading it onto my Mac, but this software works for both Linux, Windows, and Mac. I've just downloaded it here and then I'll just run it and install it and then we can flash the disk image onto our USB stick. So this is what Balena Etcher looks like. As you can see on the left hand side it says flash from file. So all we have to do is point it to the place where we downloaded it to and here's the zip file that we got and it automatically detects the image. Then select the target and put your USB stick in the machine and then once you've done that simply press flash. Okay now I've got this all ready I'll just pop the USB stick in the side and with any luck when I switch it on it's going to decide to boot. 
Now sometimes you have to press the F10 key or the F2 key or something like that to get it in a boot menu. But on this machine, happily, it just straight away figured out that it's ready to boot. I think I can speak English, just about. It's just tell me it's going to toast everything. I don't care about what's on this laptop, so I'm going to go straight ahead and do that. So let's have a look at the information. We got Linux on there, huh? I see. So let's um, let's delete those partitions first of all. So this might happen if you've got Windows 95 on it or anything like that. So let's just get rid of all these partitions. There, there you go. So I'll choose number three first of all. It's gotten rid of that one. And then I'll do the same for the other non-disc, non-DOS partitions. Choose number four, number two, back. Do the same thing for the last time. Number one. Okay. Now hopefully I've got a completely blank disk. Sounds good. Alright, so I'll create a DOS disk, create a primary DOS partition. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use all of the space for it, so that'll do. Now it's created. I think I'm ready to go. Let's just have a quick look at everything. Yeah. I think this um, C drive is the uh, USB stick, so hopefully that's okay. Okay, I'll reboot. All right, erase and format the drive. Looks good. I'm just gonna go for the full installation even though it's a full installation, the whole thing isn't very big. It's only 100 or so meg, so yeah, pretty lightweight. Much more lightweight than your average Linux distribution. Now you may notice that I've still got the USB stick in and I'm rebooting the machine. Why is that? Well, one piece of information lastly is that although I chose a full installation of FreeDOS, all of the base packages were copied over from the USB stick. However, on this USB version, unfortunately it doesn't copy all the extra packages. So as you can see here, it says FreeDOS is already installed. And to see that we have, if we go to the D drive, here's our FreeDOS installation. But the C drive at the moment is the setup key or the USB stick, which is in here. There's a tool called F Dimples. I don't think that's actually how it's called, but I, I amuse myself by calling it F Dimples. Anyway, the FreeDOS installer package list editor software here shows you all the different packages that can be installed. So these are the sort of main categories. So if we go down to games, we can either press space and it will install all of the games here, or we can take the right arrow and go and choose a particular game of your liking. So let's choose this one. Now, if you were to try and install here, it wouldn't work. And the reason for that is because you're on a USB stick, which to FreeDOS is read only. So how do we get around this? Well, what we have to do is copy the packages, the extra packages, onto the hard drive. It's a little bit of a workaround. Um, I'm sure there'll be a more elegant way for this to happen properly, and perhaps this isn't an issue with the CD-ROM version. However, this is what I had to do to get the extra packages onto my FreeDOS installation. First things first, what we do is we find out where the packages are installed. They're in FD Setup, and then from there, they're in the packages folder. And you can see the directory there holds all of the packages. If I go to the D drive now, you'll see the FreeDOS directory there. And in there, there is also a packages directory. However, only the base packages are in here. So what I can do is I can copy with the xcopy command all of the package files 
onto the D drive. So FDOS backslash packages in this case. And so that will copy this slash E will copy everything, including all the subdirectories. So I'll just hit that and it'll copy a, a whole bunch of packages across, um, which I've already copied. So that's why it's um, asking me if I want to overwrite them. So there you go. Once that's done, once I've copied all the files across, I can then reboot the machine, taking out the USB stick. And on this particular laptop, for some reason, it doesn't like to start up unless I, uh, I run it from the safe mode. It's not a big deal. You still get everything you really need. And of course, there is a whole gig of free RAM. So now that I've copied over all of those files, from the uh, USB stick onto that packages directory, it should be able to be seen in the pre-DOS packages directory. So if I just run the fdimples program once again, you'll see that all of the different extra utilities are on there and you can see that the installation hasn't taken place for all of the, these ones here. So if I want sound support, I'll just include all of those. I'll have some networking, thanks very much. And I may choose some games and editors and all sorts of things. I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and press OK. So you just use the tab key, press OK. And what it'll do is it'll go through the package lists and install them all, or basically unzip them all into your PC. And that really is um, the FreeDOS installation process. Really without these extra packages, FreeDOS itself is, well, it's just DOS. All of these extra packages, which of course are available free on the internet anyway, um, it's great because they're all compiled into this one distribution. So yeah, it saves you going along online and, and checking all these different websites. For example, the Dillo web browser is being installed right there. You'd have to go on to a whole bunch of different websites on the net if you wanted to uh, get all the appropriate software that you would need for the Dillo web browser and all the networking stuff. So now they're all installed as you can see here. Well, let's have a look at where they're all installed too. So you can see most of them are sitting off the root directory. So as a last example, I'm going to install this Q Tetris. It's a clone. Let's see what that's like. Looks like it's done. So it's kind of installed into C colon games Q Tetris. So there. Well, I never. Tetris Queen. <laughs> Complete with picture of Freddie Mercury. Brilliant. Well, that's almost all we have time for, but I thought I'd just introduce some of the programs that come with FreeDOS out of the box. Uh, so first of all, the emulators that come with it, there is a SNES emulator, a Commodore 64 emulator, an Atari 2600 emulator, and many more besides. There's also a whole bunch of archiving software like 7-Zip and RAR, but more interestingly, there's graphical desktops like the one you see here, which is called Ozone. There's also OpenGem, as well as the SEAL 32-bit desktop environment. There's editors like Vi, Emacs and Pico, and games like Floppy Bird, Free Doom, K-Raptor, Wing, which is a Galaga-like game, and many, many more besides. There are loads of networking tools, such as the Dillo web browser, the Lynx web browser, the packet drivers that you'd expect, SSH2 for DOS, as well as Michael Brutman's excellent MTCP software, which you've probably seen on one of my earlier videos if you are a subscriber. Audio tools as well, there's movie players, and there's a whole bunch of Unix tools such as Grep, Less, DU, etc. And there's tons of other handy utilities. So as I said, 
if you needed just the tools and you don't even want to use FreeDOS, you could just take all those zip files and use them on another installation of MS-DOS somewhere else. Well, that's about it. That's all I have time for on this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you find this video useful, then have a look at the rest of the videos on my channel. And if you like my channel, please consider subscribing. It'd be great to have you along for all the rest of the videos. I'm also on Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. So if you want to throw a couple of coins in the old tip jar, then yep, head over there. Thanks very much for watching. And until the next video, stay tuned and be excellent to each other.